You know, I was sitting here this morning trying to figure out uh, how to express a certain thing that I've probably been trying to express uh, for a long, long time. And that is that the to excuse me this is it's a complicated thing to explain I'm trying to do it on the fly because that's what I do now that's a good gateway to get me a bit closer to what I'm trying to say is that the same way we look at acceptance of um, all different things lately we've, we've gotten so good at that um, whether that be you know obviously very recently gender and stuff like that although that's a controversial issue but it's still uh, it's still getting talked about uh, sexual orientation before that you know uh, religious views, all those things, that acceptance of things that are different is something that we are getting way better at, which is pretty good. And I suppose the thing that I realised is that I think differently to most people. I see the world differently. And it's funny because, because I've been, it's been so ingrained in me to not expose that or to not, you know, do that because it's a very uncomfortable place to be. As many of these other people affected by different scenarios of this kind of phenomenon would attest to. But the thinking different means that I act in the world differently. And I just think we're missing something here. Like supposedly we're these creatures that adapted to situations so we could, you know, see our way through this never ending maze of dangers and threats that may come into our scope. And I think that until we learn to accept people that think differently, see the world differently, and not just accept them, but potentially listen to them, because it would obviously be someone like that <laughs> that would potentially reveal something we might be missing because unless you listen to people that are thinking outside the sphere you're never gonna you exist within a bubble and you only see what's in the bubble and what you're trained to see and what you're developed you know that's part of our coping mechanism as people that we all adopt a fairly similar kind of worldview that I don't want to change that because that for the most part, brings a, a nice, sorry, something touched my leg, ah. <laughs> a nice harmony. Um, but, yeah, why don't we build a system that actually listens to these people? And I'm sure a huge percentage of it is going to be a waste of time. But, as far as I can see, the majority of what we do currently could also be described in that same way. Um, and yeah, we, you know, maybe this is just coming of age because we do live in a world where there is communication, but there's a blockage. I've tried a lot to contact people. Um, and 
try and get them to listen quickly and it's 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 near on impossible and that just seems insane like surely there's a way we can design a fast track checking mechanism you know what i mean you know a way that you can check through double check ideas and i mean there is if you come through the I'm sure it's a lot different if you come through the kind of mainstream education system. But, but basically my rebuttal to that is anyone who's um, thinking outside that very mechanical point of education is probably has probably not gone through that mainstream uh, schooling process because yeah it's that it's it's very rigid which is important <laughs> it had to be rigid um, and yeah I think we live in a world where it's because there's so much there's so much um, content out there it's, that's the difference if you had a good idea you could kind of get it through because we weren't flooded with constant content everywhere and every way that you can imagine <clears throat> but um yeah that's made it impossible for anyone trying to innovate something independently to kind of get an edge through and then the massive companies that are um already entrenched are then just easily picking off anyone like that and that's that's the world that we find ourselves in I'm not even saying, like, I'm not even really blaming them. I can kind of see where they did that. I'm sure they started out small. Anyway. Yeah. I think it would be quite easy to have, like, a Wikipedia thing where you have engineers or different different professions kind of there to vet ideas and test them out in a way, in a kind of autonomous way so that you could um, kind of have have a timeline of that and have proof. So you could say, oh, these people all contributed to this project independently, put their time into it, did it. And uh, that would protect them from getting kind of picked off by big companies, which are just always going to see them coming. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, yeah, and until we have that, we're not going to get any innovation because the only people that are, like, you have to be so rogue to be able to innovate on this certain level because you're dealing with such big money and such, such big interest and those companies aren't really putting resources into... Uh, this kind of thing like they're just not because they don't need to they put their resources into marketing and they put their resources into protecting like picking off and, and acquiring other things and blocking because a redesign becomes too expensive like it just not like really like it's kind of it's almost like your global responsibility to redesign if you can and if you you know, if you're in that position. But, yeah. A lot of these companies, if you take Blockbuster, you know, Blockbuster doesn't exist anymore, Netflix does. And basically, that's a great story <clears throat> that we've all heard. But um, the other companies learn from Blockbuster. That's the, that's the irony of it. They learn to defend and... Um, yeah, quash any, anything that might disrupt them too much, like Uber. <clears throat> and even with that, like, they maybe were disruptive and moved too quickly because they were, especially Uber was on a, you know, it's, it's a model that is good, but it's hard to really pinpoint whether, I mean, it made it more efficient and then you compete within that 
system, but efficiency is a weird, is a weird thing. Um, especially when you do it rogue like that. Anyway, I excuse you, uh, excuse myself for my voice, but I have just a really annoying cold right now. It's just making me stuffy. Maybe it's hay fever. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I hope that made sense. It was definitely a ramble, but that's what I do, and that's what I'm talking about. It's it's like a great thing and it's also like it can be a real sucky thing. But when when I can get to the right people and explain what I'm talking about, they understand. It's just that there's lots of different people. <laughs> and getting all those people to all listen to you at the same time is um is very tricky these days especially if you don't have any credentials or anything like that or popularity and there's no way I can be popular doing this because it's boring it's the reason there's no science teachers that are <laughs> you know global celebrities or even politicians really because it's fucking boring and no one cares, but it seems to be important in progressing people, humankind, mankind forward, so, yeah, <clears throat> but basically I would state, especially this recent vaccine mandate, is just completely discriminatory to anyone that actually took the time to, to do their own research and educate themselves which is what we're supposedly you know trying to do and my point would be that unless you value and hold up people that have taken their own time and their own resources to gather information for no you know not for a company not for a school not for anything for a project just for their own, yeah, volition, decided to do that. And you have to, you have to value that the same. And that is where I strongly point the finger at this government and accuse them of discrimination against, I would call it, I don't know, neurodivergent, um, whatever hip new term you want to call it, people that think differently. And I would also claim that that is anti-evolutionary and so that it will actually hinder any maybe very important cultural and societal evolution that may need to take place in order for us to continue on this biological dance that we find ourselves in. So yeah, I hope that made sense. I never know. I just talk and then I'm fucking like, I have to try and stop myself thinking whether it's going to make sense. And then I listen to it and it seems to make sense. So Time will tell whether I actually share this or not. Hope you're having a good day. Bye.